Once kings and queens relegated to slaves. Oh, bring me home to me the joy. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Uh, welcome to a, uh, another um, episode of the uh, Gathering of Christ Sabbath class. Um, I'm Elder Ziyanash, and this is Elder uh, Shaquat. Just brother. <laughs> okay, Brother Shaquat, I apologize. <clears throat> Soon to be Elder, though. Um, uh, today, um, our lesson is going to be on, um, excuse me, on the tongue on controlling the tongue, managing the tongue. And uh, before we get started, I want to uh, just let you, let you brothers and sisters know that Elder Recall, an elder lawyer, um, will be coming on later on this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be filming live from North Carolina. That's right. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. most I will. They'll be filming from North Carolina later on this afternoon. So um, uh, today, me and Brother Shaquat are actually going to be standing in for this earlier segment of the Sabbath class, okay? So before we get started, we're going to say the Most High's Credo in Deuteronomy, the, uh, ch the sixth chapter and the third verse. <clears throat> Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akad. So that's the uh, our national credo, which is here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, as I said before. This class is going to be on controlling the tongue and managing the tongue. It's a lesson that uh, L.D. Rock has put together and blessed us with. Um, you may see me rear off on, on in some areas and touch base on some of the things that uh, 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 the Elder Rock had um, had in his commentary. A lot of times when we teach Elder Rock uh, lessons, a lot of times the, the commentary is in red, so sometimes I like to read the commentary. But in this case, what I did, I just uh, added some additional scriptures to some of his commentary just to fill uh, the lesson out, okay? So let's start in Matthews, the 15th chapter. All right. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna start out with the account of Yeshaya when the Pharisees had questioned him about why the disciples were eating and breaking bread without washing their hands. Mm -hmm. And Yeshua responded to them um, and was letting them know that it wasn't important about what actually go into your, your, your body, but what comes out of your body. Okay, so even though a lot of times we, uh, sometimes we don't say things verbally, it's what we think in our minds mentally that actually defiles us, defiles us. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees had evil, wicked thoughts. So in most cases, that, that uh, what came out of their mouths was perversion, okay, and deceit and guile against the Most High and against his truth. So let's start at Matthew 15 and verse eight. Uh, the book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse eight. Mm -hmm. This people draw up nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right, and that's what a lot of us do sometimes. That's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were doing at this time, but some of us today, we do this. A lot of times we draw near to the Most High with our lips, okay, in, in our conversation and saying, you know, we love the Most High, you know, we reverence the Most High, we respect the Most High, but a lot of times in our ways and in our minds, we show the Most High that we don't reverence and respect Him, okay? So read that again. Uh, verse 8, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, mm -hmm. and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Read. But in vain they do worship me, 
teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Right, and a lot of times that's what we do. We teach the commandments of men. We teach some of the traditions. That's what we hold on to most of the time. Instead of really exalting the Most High's laws and his statutes and, and his commandments, a lot of times we just really deal with the traditional aspects of what we want to incorporate in our own belief system. Okay, but we can't do that. We have to just stick strictly to the scriptures and do what the Most High uh, commands us to do. Okay, read on. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Right, so Yeshia was saying, listen, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you, but it's what come out of your mouth that defiles a man. What's in your thoughts, the intents of your heart, that's what corrupts you and that, that's what makes you defiling to the Most High. Read on. Verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Right, so when Yeshua said what he said to them, they got offended. Read. After hearing this saying, verse 13, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Right, so Christ was actually attacking them and bringing an accusation against them, and he said, Listen, every plant that my Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Okay, so they were not planted in the understanding and in the knowledge of Yeshua. So that's why Christ told them that they would be rooted up. Okay, there's more on that? Uh, just to finish verse 14. Okay. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Right, so when they, when they didn't understand what Christ was really saying, he said, listen, just leave them alone. Let the blind lead the blind. And let them both fall into a ditch. Okay, so let's move on. Let's get a precept in Mark the seventh chapter. Mark That's seven. going to shed a little bit more light on this. Mark seven and verse nine. Mm. Yep. Read. And he said unto them. Mm -hmm. Full well ye reject the commandment of the Most High, that ye may keep your own tradition. Right, so this is another attack, or another accusation that Christ was bringing against the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was saying, listen, you reject the commandments of the Most High so that you can keep your traditions. Okay, and this is something that we should not do. Mm -hmm. We should make sure that we adhere strictly to the commandments of the Most High and not deal with uh, traditionalism or dealing with the traditionals that we learn from our forefathers or that we learn from just being in different um, belief systems. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's uh, get Matthews, the 23rd chapter. Matthew 23? Yeah, I apologize. Let's, let's move on to, let's get Ecclesiastes in the Bible and let's get the fifth chapter. Ecclesiastes? Mm-hmm. So we have to understand that it, a lot of times it's just not what comes out of your mouth. A lot of times it's what's, what's inside of your heart and what's inside of your mind also that defiles you, okay? So we want to go over, uh, we're going to go over a series of scriptures that's going to go into some of the order that we should have when it comes to our tongue and how we need, how we need to discipline ourselves when we're uh, in the congregation or when we're uh, fellowshipping. Ecclesiasticus, the fifth chapter, and let's start from verse 1. Okay, the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 5 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High. Right, so the Most High says keep your foot when you come into his house. That means to keep your foot means to watch your step when you come into the Most High's house. And a lot of times, often we don't do that. A lot of us don't watch our step when we come into the house of the Lord. When you come in fellowship with brothers and sisters and you're coming to get the teachings on the Sabbath or, or, or uh, any other days that, that, that the elders are teaching, you have to be careful about what you say and how you conduct and carry yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. So read that again. 
Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Mm -hmm. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High, mm -hmm. and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Right, so be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Okay, so we're dealing with the mouth and how you have to watch your tongue and watch what comes out of your mouth. And a lot of times we don't do that. Okay, so when we're coming and we're fellowshipping and uh, leadership is teaching and going, and going through lessons and going over the understanding, we have to just sit there for the most part and just you know receive the knowledge and receive the information instead of always wanting to comment and give a rebuttal mm -hmm. okay read verse 2 be not rash with thy mouth right you see the most high said don't be rash with your mouth because your mouth can get you in trouble and you can say things out of time and out of order read and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before the Most High. Right, so let not your heart to be hasty to utter anything before the Most High. The same thing similar that the Pharisees were dealing with. They, had, they were uttering perverse things in their mind. Even though they, they were uttering perverse things verbally to Yeshia and about Yeshia, they still had evil, wicked intent. And it starts in our minds. So read that again. <clears throat> and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before the Most High. Right, so let not your heart, let not your mind and your thoughts be hasty, be quickly, okay, to utter anything before the Most High. Because when you're in class, okay, and you're fellowshipping and the Spirit is coming out and the knowledge and the information is coming out, you're in the presence of the Most High. Okay, and you have to have respect and reverence as priest as if you were in, this, in the Most High's presence. Okay, read. For the Most High is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Mm -hmm. Therefore let thy words be few. Right, so let your words be few. Don't be in the habit of always wanting to uh, raise your hand and reiterate something that the elder may have already said. Okay, read. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, mm -hmm. and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. Mm -hmm. When thou vowest... I think that's it, right? No, it's more than that. I want to go down to six, actually. Okay, verse four. Mm -hmm. When thou vowest a vow unto the Most High, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Right, so when you vow a vow to the Most High, defer not to pay it. Make sure that you honor your commitments when it comes to, uh, to the Most High. Read. Hmm. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Mm -hmm. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow that than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Right, so it's better for you not to make a commitment to the Most High than make a commitment to the Most High and not make good on that commitment. Mm -hmm. Read on. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. You see that? So suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. And a lot of times we don't examine that. We just utter things, we say things, we jump the gun, we put out things before it's time, and a lot of times we don't make good on it. Okay, so you have to just be mindful of what you say and how you say things and when you say things. Okay, let's move on. Let's get, um, let's get the Book of Wisdom in the Apocrypha, the first chapter. Wisdom of Solomon. The first chapter, and let's start from the first verse. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Right, so the Most High says for us to love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Okay, and that's who we are, that's who we are soon to be. We are soon to become the judges of the earth. We're the judges of the earth right now and in spirit. Okay, but physically, uh, we shall uh, take on this uh, position. Read. Think of the Lord with a good heart, mm -hmm. and simplicity of heart seek Him. Right, so the Most High says seek Him with a good heart, and just seek Him with simplicity. Okay, you don't have to be rash with your mouth and try to overexert uh, uh, yourself in different situations. Okay, read. For He will be found of them that tempt him not, mm -hmm. and showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. Read. For froward thoughts separate from the Most High. Right, so froward thoughts, thinking and doing things presumptuously or just doing things on your own, 
doing things without counsel, uh, just being rash, uh, being irrational, just being erratic with your thoughts, things like that. Okay, read. And his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. Right, and that's how you get, and eventually, when you uh, do different things, the Most High will reprove you, and you will be found to be unwise. Okay, because the things that you did, or the things that you're doing, the Most High will condemn you, and you will be found out to be foolish. Okay? Let's move on. Let's get Ecclesiasticus, the 20th chapter. So we're just touching base on the thought process of the mind and also the verbal uh, process or the verbal communication when you're talking and using your tongue and actually speaking with your mouth, okay? So we're just jumping around and touching base on different aspects of uh, you uh, using, using the tongue. You said Ecclesiastes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 20 and... Let's start from verse uh, 18. I think that's the only one, 20 and 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ecclesiasticus in the uh, Apocrypha, mm -hmm. chapter 20 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. To slip upon a pavement is better than to slip with the tongue. Right, so the Most High said it's better to slip on a pavement than to slip with the tongue. Sometimes it's better for you to just take a fall then for you to say something, and because once you say something, you can't pull that back. Mm -hmm. Once you utter something out of your mouth, there's no way you, can, you can't take it back once it goes forth. The same way the Most High. When he uttered his word, he can't, he can't take it back. Everything the Most High uh, had said, it has to be fulfilled and played out in prophecy and played out in our lives. Okay, so that's something that you have to be careful, but you gotta be careful with your tongue and be careful about what you say to people how you say it to people, the approach you take with people, you gotta always be mindful about what you're saying, okay? Let's move on. Let's get uh, Ecclesiastes the seventh chapter. Still in the book of Sirach, and we're going to get Ecclesiastes the seventh chapter. Ecclesiastes seven and um, Let's start with verse 14. Now, I'm, go I'm going to go into some uh, scriptures on as far as exalting yourself. A lot of this was in Elder Yarok's uh, uh, narration uh, in the lesson where he was expressing um, about how a lot of times a lot of younger uh, br brothers and a lot of younger sisters um, kind of be rash with their mouth when they're in class and things like that. So I just wanted to respond to that a little bit with a few scriptures. Okay, just something for us to examine. So it's Ecclesiastes 7, and let's start from verse 14. Okay. Uh, use not many words in a multitude of elders. Right, so use not many words in a multitude of elders. Okay, so some of you younger brothers and even some of you brothers, is it brothers and sisters who have may have had some time and tenure, a lot of times, you know, you have to just be patient and be careful about how you uh, respond when you're in front of the elders. Okay, or when you want to give a response and the elder is uh, teaching or, um, you know, dealing with a situation, you've got to be careful about how you address them. Okay, read that again. <clears throat> Use not many words in a multitude of elders. Mm -hmm. Read. And make not much babbling when thou prayest. Right, so the same way you don't want to babble too much when you're sending up a prayer, just be short and be brief. That's the same approach you want to take when you're dealing with leadership. Be short, be brief. If you're called upon to say something, say it. If an elder is discoursing and, and teaching, if there's not a, a need for you to intervene and interrupt him when he's teaching, please do not do it, okay? So let's get, um, uh, let's move over to the eighth chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, let's jump down to verse 29. 29. Mm-hmm. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sirach in the Apocrypha, mm -hmm. chapter 7 and verse 29. Fear the Lord with all thy soul, and reverence his priests. Right, so the Mosai says, fear the Lord with all thy soul, and reverence his priests. Read. Love him that made thee with mm -hmm. all thy strength. 
-hmm. and forsake not his ministers. Right, and forsake not the Most High's ministers. Okay, once again, I just want to touch base on how you got to just uh, manage and watch your tongue when you're dealing with leadership. Okay, or when leadership is discoursing or talking or teaching, be not rash to, to, uh, to utter anything. All right, let's move on. Let's get um, Ecclesiasticus, the sixth chapter. And the 33rd verse. Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and verse 33. Mm -hmm. If thou love to hear. Start from verse 32, please. Sorry. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. Right, so the most high says, my son, if thou will, thou shalt be taught. If you have a willing desire to be taught, you will be taught. If you have a willing desire to get the knowledge and get the information, pay attention and you will get it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it says, read that again. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. Right, and if you're going to apply your mind, then thou shalt be prudent. So you have to be cautious. Okay, read. Verse 33. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. Right, so if you're the kind of person that like to hear, then you're going to receive understanding. Okay, not always running off at the mouth, not always having something to say. You're just a listener. Okay, you have to be a listener and learn before you can be a teacher. Okay, and before you can be one that opens your mouth and say some of the things that you would like to say. Read. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Mm -hmm. So if you bow, bind thy, bow thy ear, you should be wise, because you will get, you should listen to the discourse of your elders. Read. Mm -hmm. Verse 34. Mm -hmm. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Right, so this is what a lot of us have to do, a lot of the younger audience. You have to just stand in the multitude of your elders, okay? And then you get the knowledge and get the information that way by watching your elder and learning from your elder. Not, you know, versing your elder or over, -exal uh, over uh, exalting yourself over your elder or speaking over your elder. Right. Okay? Read. Uh, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Be willing to hear every godly discourse. Right. So just be ready to hear. Like Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter spoke about. When you come to the house of the Lord, just be ready to hear instead of giving this sacrifice of fools. But a lot of times we don't do that. A lot of times we want to, we want to, you know, we want to, we want to teach. You understand? We want to, we want to expound. We want to say different things. Okay. And all the time that's not good. Okay. Read. And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Right. And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. So the thing that, that leadership is talking about, the lessons and the studies that the elders uh, bring out, let, don't let those things escape you because that's how you grow and that's how you develop and that's how, that, that's how you know, one day through you constantly listening to the studies and getting the understanding, then you'll be in a position one day to start teaching and start giving uh, rebuttals or whatever or adding uh, to, um, you know, precepts to, uh, you know, to the lessons. Okay, read. Verse 36, mm -hmm. and if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. You see that? So you have to be in order. You don't go before him, you get behind him, and you follow him. You don't go ahead, okay? You get behind the elder, and you constantly inquire about scriptural references, scriptural information, history, whatever the case may be. Okay, but you have to be in a position of a student. You have to become a pupil before you can become a master. Okay, read. Verse 37. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord mm -hmm. and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart. That's what you have to do. Is more on that? Excuse me. Uh, just to finish. And mm -hmm. give thee wisdom at thine own desire. Right, so you'll get the wisdom, okay? But you just have to be patient and deal with leadership, deal with your elders. You understand what I'm saying? Go under the ride, okay? Go under the, uh, the, the discipline of being a student, okay? And learn and grow in the knowledge and, 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 uh, and in the wisdom. 
And then eventually, as time goes on, when the most I see fit, he'll, he'll endow you with the Holy Spirit. All right? So let's move on. Let's get, uh, let's, we're still in Sirach. Okay, a few more scriptures in Sirach. Uh, let's get Ecclesiastes, the 18th chapter, the book of Sirach, the 18th chapter. And let's read a little one there. So we're still dealing with the mouth, okay? We're still dealing with, the, with different aspects of the mouth and how we uh, use uh, or how we misuse our tongue in different situations, okay? Let's get um, 18 and let's start at 21. Okay. No, let's start at, um, let's start at 18. Uh, Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach chapter 18 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. A fool will upbraid churlishly, and a gift of the envious consumeth the eyes. Mm -hmm. Read. Learn before thou speak. Right, so the Most High says, learn before you speak. Before you uh, comment, before you respond, just try to just examine the situation first. Try to figure out what's going on. Try to digest the information before you be quickly or to, uh, to utter something out of your mouth, okay? Because the tongue can get you in trouble, all right? So just learn first, learn what's going on. Find out what, what, the, uh, what the particulars are before you decide to comment on a situation and run your mouth or open your mouth. Mm. Read. And use physic or ever thou be sick. Right. Before judgment, examine thyself. Right, so before you get judged, examine yourself because a lot of times you can deal with the illness. Okay, and that's what sin does. Sin brings on different illnesses. And when you're not in order and you're not conducting yourself properly in the church or amongst leadership, a lot of times you bring unnecessary woes upon yourself. All right, read. And in the day of visitation, mm -hmm. thou shalt find mercy. Right, read. Humble thyself before thou be sick. And in the time of sins, show repentance. Right, and that's what you got to do. Humble yourself before you get sick. Okay, and when, if you are afflicted and you're dealing with the sin, you have to deal with uh, proper repentance. Okay, so let's move on. Let's get Ecclesiasticus, the 11th chapter. Let's start from, um, let's start from verse 7. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 11. Or, um, hmm. Hmm. I wish we can go up some here. Yeah, let's start from verse 7. We'll start from 7. Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 and verse mm -hmm. 7. Mm -hmm. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. You see that? So you can't blame anything. You can't squawk. You can't respond. You can't comment. You can't say anything. You can't open your mouth until you examine the situation first. You have to examine things. Okay, like I mentioned before. And a lot of times we're just quick with the mouth. We're just on the fly. Always want to respond. Always want to rebuttal. Always want to um, uh, protect ourselves or, or just cover for our sin. You understand? Before, before leadership even get out completely what they want to say when they're trying to reprimand you, a lot of times we already have an excuse. Mm -hmm. Just receive the reprimand. Keep your mouth shut, because nine times out of ten, what do we do? We end up hanging ourselves. That's what your mouth do. Your mouth gets you in trouble. And all you got to do is just keep quiet, just, just take the reprimand. But we're just so used to wanting to defend ourselves and used to just, you know, flying off at the mouth. Okay, but there's dangers in that. And that's what we have to be mindful of, the dangers of, uh, of the mouth and the dangers of the tongue. All right? So read on. <clears throat> Understand first and then rebuke. Right, so understand what's going on first, like I said before. Understand the particulars of the situation before you respond, before you want to go on defense, okay? You start running your mouth and defending yourself. Understand what's going on because you can make a mistake in that aspect too. All right, so read that again. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Right, read. Understand first and then rebuke. Mm-hmm. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. You see that? Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. A lot of times we already got the answer ready. We got it. We in defense. Before we even finish what we're saying, you already, you're already blurring out. Cutting, cutting the elder off. Cutting leadership off. 
just to get out what you need to get out. Okay, so you got to manage your tongue and you got to manage your mouth. Read. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Right. And neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. And I believe that's why Elder Yurok uh, put that narration in there, that comment in there, because that happens a lot. Okay? It happens a lot in the church, and it needs to stop. When elders and leadership is talking and going over a lesson, there's really no need for you to have to really uh, respond. You don't have to add anything. The elder, the, the Holy Spirit is working with the elder enough for him to convey what needs to be conveyed in the lesson or in the study. Let it come out. Let it flow. Stop interrupting the spirit. Because when you interrupt a man in his speech, you interrupt the flow of the spirit. Okay, I don't know how many times uh, leadership has brought that up. All right? Read. Uh, <clears throat> verse 9. Mm -hmm. Strive not in a matter that concerneth thee not. Right, so don't strive in a matter that doesn't concern you. If it doesn't concern you, leave the situation alone. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to feel compelled to want to intervene all the time. Mm -hmm. You understand? Your job right now is to come in and sit down and listen and get the knowledge. Okay? It's for uh, the, 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 the uh, newer members. Okay? Just come in for now. Just get the knowledge. You know, I don't, I don't know what it is. It seems like there's a, uh, I don't know, uh, brothers being the truth for six months maybe a year and you know they think they're scholars they want to start telling leadership what to do okay we have to examine that about ourselves okay read on and sit <coughs> not in judgment with sinners mm -hmm. right and don't sit in judgment with sinners that happens a lot too that judgment is wicked judgment grouping up with other brothers and sisters but they may be dissatisfied mm -hmm. with what's going on in the church or how things is going and you start talking you start running your mouth. Okay? It's off. The most high is against that kind of behavior. All right? So read that again. Sit not in the judgment of sinners. Mm -hmm. And sit not in judgment with sinners. Mm -hmm. Read. Verse 10. My son, meddle not with many matters. For if thou meddle much, thou shalt not be innocent. See, don't meddle in too many matters. Don't always want to give an input. Don't be talking about this and talking about that. Don't be involved in this and involved in that because you won't be you won't be innocent. But what did the brother say? What did you say? You added you added your two cents in there too. You was talking, you was running your mouth too, just like everybody else. You had a lot to say, right? But, but when it's time for a council, the cat got your tongue. You can't talk then. Let the cat have your tongue all the time. All right? Read. And if thou follow after, thou shalt not obtain. Neither shalt thou escape by fleeing. You see that? So you're not going to obtain any benefit from that, and you're not going to be able to escape the punishment or the penalty. Read. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. There is one that laboreth and taketh pains and maketh haste, and mm -hmm. is so much the more behind. I think that's it on that. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Let's move on. Let's get... Um, Ecclesiasticus, uh, the uh, 32nd chapter. Let's get more on the tongue and how brothers and sisters have to be disciplined when they're in class. And then this discipline is just not for class, okay? I know I'm targeting the, uh, the church uh, atmosphere and the congregational environment, but even outside of the, uh, the, the church atmosphere, when you're um, in the church environment, when you're just, you know, at work or just, you know, going about your, your daily life, you know, you, you really got to watch what you say. You got to watch how you come off uh, or how you respond to people. You have to watch how you react to people. You just have to watch what comes out of your mouth. Okay? So we're at 32 and let's start from verse 7. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 32 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Speak, young man. If there be need of thee. Right, for the younger brothers and sisters in the audience, speak. If there's a need for you to speak, then you can speak. Nine times out of ten, when leadership wants you to speak, they'll ask, um, they'll ask you to speak. They'll address you. You know, uh, I, I think for the most part, people are probably, uh, I guess if there's something really important that you have to say, I think people are raising their hands for the most, most part. Um, I don't, uh, but it's not right to just abruptly just be rude and just, you understand, the elders is teaching and you just want to just 
get out what you just want to get out. Okay? That's wrong. Okay, so read that again. Mm. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee. You see that? So speak, young man. Okay, if there be need of you. And that young just not is just not an age as a number. That young as an age as in truth, as in knowledge. A lot of people are young, but they just feel compelled after six months or a year of getting the knowledge, they just feel like they're scholars. Now they want to teach their elders. They want to teach the brothers that was teaching them. And, in some, and there's nothing wrong with that. In some cases, you understand, some brothers and sisters have brought um, potent uh, uh, information to leadership. You understand? But they didn't interrupt them. You know, the disciples, did, they didn't interrupt Yeshaya. When he was teaching, he was giving his sermons and his lectures. They didn't interrupt him. They waited to after he, he completed and was done with he, what he was saying. And then they got with him privately. Okay? And that's what we need to do. Okay? Read. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, mm -hmm. and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. You see that? And yet scarcely. So if there's an opportunity for you to say something and you need to say something, and leadership is giving you the, uh, the floor to, to respond or say something, it's okay. You can do it. But do it scarcely. Okay? Don't, don't consume the rest of the class. A lot of that happens too. Some people get up and they, they want to expand for two and three minutes. It's not necessary. Make your initial comment or statement and that's it. Sit back down. Read. Verse 8. Let thy speech be short, mm -hmm. comprehending much in a few words. Right. So whatever you want to say, let it be short. It doesn't have to be long and extravagant. You don't have to let people know how deep you are. Just let it be short. You understand? Answer the question with the precept or, or with the comment or a brief statement and that's it. But... You know how we do it. This is an opportunity now for us to shine. It's an opportunity for us to shine and for, to let everyone know that we're deep. And that's the wrong spirit to be in. Okay, so you got to manage that and you have to control that. Control your tongue. Okay? Restrain yourself. Okay, it's not necessary all the time to, um, you know, to, to, to just babble different things out. All right? Read on. Uh, the middle of verse 8. Mm-hmm. Be as one that knoweth, and yet holdeth his tongue. You see that? How come we can't do that? But, it, you know, I guess it'd be itching us a lot of times. You know something, because you know something doesn't mean that you have to always respond and put out what you know. You don't have to do that. You can just relax sometimes. Let the elder continue to teach what he's teaching. It's not necessary for you, for you to intervene all the time because you know something or you may have studied that particular, um, you know, that particular understanding or that particular information. So now you got to go ahead and you got to shine now. It's unnecessary. Read that again. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. You see that? Why can't we just be someone, be one that just know and just hold our tongue? Why can't we do that? Read. Verse 9. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal you see with that? them. That's the mistake a lot of y'all make. A lot of us have made. Okay? I've, I've done it in the past. You understand? And got smashed. Got the base by leadership. I've done it when I was first, when I was first coming up. Okay? But I was off. You know, it was an opportunity for me to shine and show that I knew something. But I was in error. Okay? So read that again one more time. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. You see that? It's not necessary for you to make yourself equal to leadership or among great men or elders. Men of respect. Okay? Your teachers. It's not necessary for you to do that. It serves, it serves no, no purpose. It, the only purpose it serves is it's an opportunity for you to exalt yourself. That's the purpose it serves. It don't really serve for any edification for, for the members. Okay, so this is just more the reason why you have to just watch what you say, you know, watch your tongue, and watch what, you, what comes out of your mouth. All right, read. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. You see that? So when ancient men are in place, Use not many words. Also, this pertains also not just to uh, leadership as far as uh, 
as the church is concerned, but also other elders, brothers who are uh, uh, elders in age. If, if elder brothers are having a conversation, you're not supposed to just walk over there and just get involved in that conversation. It's totally disrespectful. You being a younger man or being a younger woman, and I, don't, I haven't been um, addressing the sisters uh, much, but you sisters too. It's not necessary for you to uh, have to get involved in different um, conversations and things that you see widow women are having or elder women are having. Unless you're invited in the conversation, then you get involved, but you just don't walk over and just, uh, you know, bogart and just jump in, this, in, in the conversation. It's disrespectful, okay? And our, our parents, our mothers and our fathers taught us better than that, okay? We didn't interrupt our mom and our dad when they were talking and having conversations. You know what happened, right? You found yourself getting up off the floor when you did that. So it's the same thing when it comes to dealing with elders in the church or even out, elders outside of the church. Okay, because we have to be a light, okay, not just to the Gentiles, but we have to be a light to the rest of the world, to our brothers and sisters who are in darkness also, all right? So it's more on that? Uh, yeah, yeah, verse, uh, yeah, you bet. Before the thunder goeth lightning, mm -hmm. and before a shame-faced man shall go favor. Read. <clears throat> verse 11. Rise up the times, and be not the last, but... Get thee home without delay. Right hand of your business. Read. There take thy pastime mm -hmm. and do what thou wilt, but sin not by proud speech. Right. So take your pastime. Do what you will. Okay. Do what you want to do, but have some respect. Okay. And sin not. Okay. By proud speech. And that's what that is. It's proud speech when you want to uh, exalt yourself over someone else. Whether it's leadership, like I said before, whether, whether it's leadership, whether it's another brother or a sister, we do that sometimes. We always want to, you know, we, I understand we, Israel, we have a competitive spirit, okay? But let, not, don't let that competitive spirit cause you to sin, okay? And cause you to always um, be at odds and, at, and um, at adversity with your brothers and sisters, okay? Don't let that spirit take, you, uh, take over you. And control you in that manner all right and if you don't manage it manage the tongue that's what it will do okay so let's move on let's get um uh ecclesiasticus we're still in the book of ecclesiastes ecclesiasticus excuse me uh the fourth chapter and let's start from verse 22. Uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 4 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Accept no person against thy soul, mm -hmm. and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. Right, so accept no person against your soul. Okay, when, it's, when you know that you need to do the right thing and do the proper thing, don't let anyone persuade you into doing something else. All right. So don't accept anyone against your own spirit, against your soul. All right. Don't compromise. OK. Your spirit. All right. Read. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. And refrain not to speak when there is occasion to do good. You see that? So when there's an occasion to do good, then you can, you know, you can feel more comfortable about speaking. But a lot of times when there's an occasion to do good, something that's simple, a lot of times we don't react to that. You understand when there's a situation and you know it's an opportunity, opportunity for you to uh, say something positive and constructive to a brother or sister. A lot of times we don't take advantage of that opportunity, but that's when the Most High is dealing with you. Then those are the opportunities uh, when you open your mouth. That's what He respects. Then mm -hmm. you understand you restoring a brother or sister in a spirit of meekness instead of being harsh and cruel towards them. But a lot of times we don't we don't sway that direction. We look for other opportunities to exalt ourselves, to exalt ourselves. Excuse me. Those are the opportunity opportunities we look for. Okay, read that again. Verse twenty-three. Mm -hmm. And refrain not to speak when there is occasion to do good. You see that? So when there's an occasion for us to uh, do something positive and constructive to help brothers and sisters, or to help just a brother or a sister, because there's no glory in it, because no one is going to see that. 
a lot of times we won't even deal with. We won't gravitate towards that because we're looking for something else. We're looking for um, uh, to be honored. We're looking uh, uh, to be uh, prestigious. You understand? And we have to get out that spirit. Okay? There's more on that? Now, just to finish that verse. Mm -hmm. And hide not thy wisdom in her beauty. Right. And don't hide your wisdom in her beauty. Because we, a lot of times, like I said before, we want to use that wisdom in front of the congregation, in front of masses of people. That's when we want to use the wisdom. But we don't want to use the wisdom when it comes to just dealing with a, you know, a small minor situation that can encourage a brother or a sister, that can inspire a brother or a sister. You don't want to, you don't, you don't want to speak wise then. You don't want to, you don't want to utilize that occasion because you don't get exalted. You don't get recognized for it. But that's the thing. Your recognition is, is not supposed to be in, out in the open. It's supposed to be hid. Your recognition is supposed to come from the most high. It's not supposed to, your accolades shouldn't come from the audience. And we have to get out that spirit. All right? There's more on that? Uh, down to 25. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, verse 24. For by speech, wisdom shall be known, and learning by the word of the tongue. Right. So by speech, wisdom shall be known. So by a man's speech, you can tell what, what kind of level he's on. You can tell whether he's intelligent or you can tell whether he's foolish. Read. In no wise speak against the truth. Right. And in no wise speak against the truth. All right. There's more on that. But be ashamed, but be abashed, abashed of the error of thine ignorance. Right. And to be abashed means to be, uh, um, to be embarrassed. Okay. Of the error of your ignorance when you speak out against the truth. Okay, because speaking out against the truth is part of is part of actually really speaking out against the spirit. Okay, it's it's really blasphemy. All right, so let's move on. Let's get um. The, uh, let's get it. Let's get let's go let's go back in the um in the Bible, and let's get Ecclesiastes the tenth chapter. <clears throat> I'm bouncing around, y'all. Okay, so just bear with me, and um. You know, we're still touching base on the tongue, on how we have to watch our, watch our mouth and watch what we say and watch what comes out of our mouth. Okay, it's very important. Give me one moment to get that. Ecclesiasticus um, 10 and let's start from verse 11. Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiastes, excuse me, in the Bible. Uh, chapter 10 verse 11 hmm. Surely the serpent will bite without enchantment and a babbler is no better You see that so a serpent will bite without enchantment and a babbler is no better Someone who always want, wants to uh, run their mouth Someone who always wants to expound on things who always wants wants to be deep Okay, or just just saying foolish things in general all right, read. Uh, verse 12. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious. So the words of a man that's dealing with wisdom is gracious. Okay, he's not uttering perverse things out of his mouth. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's not uttering perverse things out of his mouth. He's gracious. He's, uh, he's um, pleasant. He's kind. He's courteous. Okay, when he approached, when he approached brothers and, and, and sisters. Okay, read. Mm -hmm. But the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. You see that? But the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. He will convict him himself. He will condemn his himself. Himself. Okay? He will embarrass himself. All right? Read on. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness. You see that? So the beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness. Meaning as soon as he start talking, he only, he only uttered a few words and you're already shaking your head like this dude is tripping. Read. And the end of his talk is mischievous madness. You see that? And then when he finishes conversation, it's mischievous. You find out that what this guy is saying, what he's thinking in his mind, is mischievous. And it's also madness. It makes no sense at all. Read. 
A fool is also full of words. Mm. A man cannot tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? You see that he's full of so many words till you can't even determine what's what's coming out this guy's mouth next. What is he going to say next? Okay, Ms. Moana? I think that's it on that. Okay, let's move on. Let's get, um, let's go back in the Apocrypha, okay? And get uh, the, the Book of Sirach in the 19th chapter. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we don't find ourselves in this position as appearing and being and being foolish okay with ourselves and also with other brothers and sisters by constantly running our mouth and always having something to say you know i, I want to give a um a testimony i used to work with a guy with a, at, a, at a construction company mm -hmm. and this guy he had a an imaginative mind and this guy used to lie so much we we, we named him the lion king Oh, because that's how bad this guy used to run his mouth and lie. It was terrible. Where we at again? I'm sorry. Uh, we're at Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 19, 19 and 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that's what, in actuality, that's what happens. That's what you're really going into. When you're dealing with foolery and, um, and you're constantly running your mouth and you always have something to say, a lot of nine times out of ten, you're lying. You're dealing with a with a uh, with a false tongue, nine times out of ten, because you always have something to say. You always have an adventure to tell somebody. Okay, and a lot of times people be lying. Okay, so we have to make sure we don't fall in that category. All right. Nineteen and six, right? Ecclesiasticus. Uh -huh. Nineteen, verse six. Okay. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. You see that? So he or she, okay, like I said, I, I apologize for leaving you sisters out, okay, but he or she, okay, that can rule up that tongue, it says, right, mm -hmm. she'll sure. live without strife. Mm -hmm. See, if you control your tongue and control your conversation, your approach, some of the things that you say, your response, you understand the scripture says that a smooth answer turneth away wrath. So even your response sometimes, mm -hmm. you, you have to just examine that and take a look at that too. Because that can cause strife and cause problems, okay, and lead into uh, and lead to uh, further uh, um, arguments. All right, read. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Mm -hmm. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. Mm -hmm. So if you just keep your mouth shut most of the time, you'll have less evil. But if you're the kind of person that's really talkative and you always want to talk about this and always want to talk about that and you're babbling about this and babbling about that uh, nine times out of ten you're going to have a lot of friction in your life okay read rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee right that's another issue okay running your mouth okay you got to watch the tongue don't rehearse something that has been already told to you by somebody else okay don't repeat it read and thou shalt fear never the worst. Right, and you don't have to uh, worry about fearing the worst. What's the worst? Someone tell you something, you go run your mouth and tell somebody else, now you're in trouble for running your mouth. That's the worst. That's what can happen. Or you can get, in, you can get incriminated, you can get indicted, you can be part of uh, mixed up, uh, they can, you can get charged with, with uh, conspiracy. All, there's all kind of dangers when it comes to running your mouth, when you don't manage your tongue, you bridle your tongue. Mm -hmm. Read. Whether it be to friend or foe, talk not of other men's lives. You see that? I know a lot of people don't like this scripture. Mm -hmm. Whether it be a friend or whether it be a foe. A foe is an enemy. Oh, so we can't talk about our enemies' lives either? Mm -hmm. I know that bothers a lot of people. Because, you know, we're, we're rough on our enemies. Okay, but read that again. Whether it be to friend or foe, mm -hmm. talk not of other men's lives. You see that? So whether it be a friend or a foe, talk not about another man's life. It's none of your business. It's none of your concern. 
unless you're really having the conversation and you're being genuine, genuine about it and you want to assist a brother, you want to help someone out, then I can see you going to an elder or going to another brother or sister and saying, listen, I think brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so is dealing with a situation. Is there anything we can do to help them out? But we don't do that. We backbite. We murmur. That's what we do. And it's off. So we have to watch our mouth and watch and watch the tongue. All right? Read. And if thou canst without offense, reveal them not. You see that? And if you can, without, being, without offending them, reveal them not. Don't expose them. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary for you, for you to expose them. If you can pull a brother or sister to the side and talk to them, do that. Okay? A lot of times we don't want to do that. This is an opportunity now for us to exalt ourselves and expose someone else. What kind of spirit is that? What kind of vibration is that? I just wanted to touch base on that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, even though it's, it's still making a relation to you dealing with a, um, you know, a, a close friend. But a lot of times we have things on people and we put it out there knowing that it's going to destroy them. Mm -hmm. Knowing that it's going to embarrass them. Knowing that everybody else is going to perceive them as being wicked. That's something. It's, it's, it's evil. It's evil for us to be, uh, to be like that. And it's, 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 it's strange. I don't understand. A lot of us, some people actually thrive on that kind of behavior. Read on. Uh, verse 10. Mm -hmm. If thou hast heard a word, let it die with thee. You see that? So if you, have, if you heard something, let it die with you. How many people can do that? How many people can take another man's secret to the grave or another sister's secret to the grave knowing you have incriminating evidence that can destroy them how many people can do that just don't say anything and let the most high revenge it let the most high deal with it let the most high reveal it how many people can do that not many a lot of us look at that as an opportunity you understand to condemn someone or expose them and then we get the glory and the honor. Yeah, brother so-and-so caught him. He saw it. Sister so-and-so, yeah, she, brought, she was the one that brought it out. And, and, we, and we, you know, we take honor in that. Dignity, prestige, and exposing other people. It's, that's a wicked disposition. There's no other way to look at that. Read on. Uh, excuse me, I'll skip verse 9. More? Okay. Verse 9. For he heard and observed thee, and when time cometh, he will hate thee. Mm, you see that? So now people hear you, and people are observing you, okay? Or your friend, rather. And when the time comes, he's going to hate you. But also I wanted to say, too, the same person that you may go and tell there to and tell them something about someone else, they're looking at you strange, too. Why? Because you have the, po you have the, uh, you have the, the, uh, the power or... They have to consider the possibility, rather, that you can go and, 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 you know, and turn on them, too, and start talking about them. So now they're looking at you with the evil eye also. Okay? Read. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. If thou hast heard a word, let it die with thee, mm -hmm. and be bold. It will not burst thee. You see that? Be bold. Be strong. It's not going to burst you. You don't have to get it out. You don't have to get it out. Even if you're on your deathbed, just go ahead and, and, and demise, pass out. You don't have to, you know, be evil and be upset and be mad and, and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to tell the story now because I'm on my way out. A lot of people do things like that too. A lot of things come out on people's deathbeds. You understand? I can testify to that. I had a situation like that, that I was dealing with a family member. And when my mom and her demise, that's when all this stuff started coming out. You understand? And it, it's, it's, it was off. Read. Verse 11. A fool travaileth with a word. Mm -hmm. Travaileth with a word as a woman in labor of You a see child. that? Wait a minute. It's so a fool travaileth with the word as a woman. You know what the Most High is saying, right? It's, that, that's a feminine spirit. Straight up. When you travail with the word as a woman, okay, and then you holding on to it as a woman that's getting ready to bring forth a, a, a child, meaning you're itching. To get it out. You're itching to get it out. 
itching to get it out. I, I, man, I just can't wait. As soon as I see Sister So and So, look, you, you texting. You're not even waiting till you get home. You texting while you in the car. I'll be right over, girl. Listen, I got something to tell you. All that is off. Read. As an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh, mm. so is a word within a fool's belly. You see that? As an arrow that stick in a man's thigh, so is the word in a fool's belly. That's how embedded it is inside of us. We admonish a friend. It may be he have not done it, and if he have done it, that he do it no more. You see that? So you can admonish your friend because it's a possibility that he didn't do it or he didn't say it. Okay, read. Admonish thy friend, it may be he have not said it, and if he have, that he speak it not again. You see that? So if it's a situation you feel like you can recover your, your brother and sisterhood, then you admonish him, you correct him and say, listen, not what you said was off. I didn't appreciate it. Same thing with the sisters, you go to him. You talk to him about it. You do a Matthew 18 and 15. Okay? And you, you discuss it. And you talk about it and see if y'all can come to uh, an, an agreement to still uh, endeavor to keep the unity of the brother and the sisterhood. Read. Admonish a friend, for many times it is slander, mm -hmm. and believe not every tale. You see that? So a lot of times it be slander. A lot of times somebody didn't even say something, but it's other people out there just putting other stuff out there. You understand what I'm saying? And saying, yeah, he said this, he said that, he did this, he did that, and you didn't do anything. The brother didn't do anything. Now, everybody upset because somebody's running their mouth, hmm. because somebody's dealing with the tongue. Everybody's upset. No, man, I, I, don't, I don't know what the brother's talking about. I didn't say anything. Then when you try to call the brother and confront him or the sister, you, you can't, they, they phone is off. You can't reach them. That's another thing, too. Do not receive an accusation from anyone unless there are witnesses don't listen at all i don't care who it is if they don't have if they can't produce a witness okay to uh corroborate the uh this what they're telling you don't listen to them do not receive that accusation or that information because they could be lying and they could be trying to slander another brother or a sister that's how you got to deal with it y'all listen hold up wait a minute can you go get a witness or can I, can I get a witness? Can I go get someone before you tell me what you're about to tell me? That's what you need to do to cover yourself because you will be partaker in another man's sins. All right, so be careful with that. But this is what the tongue do. This is what the mouth do. It gets people in trouble. It causes all kind of confusion because we don't want to bridle our mouth. We don't want to control the things that we, uh, that we say because people have this, this um, it's, it's demonic. That, that desire and that need to, to murmur and backbite is satanic. And when you're dealing with that, you need to examine yourself. When you feel like that, know that something is wrong when you want to go and tell bear and, and, and backbite and, and just talk and gossip about other people's lives and about things that don't pertain to you. Know that something is wrong, that you're dealing with a spirit. All right? So um, let's move on. Or, or is there more on that? Um, verse 16, just okay. to finish up. Mm -hmm. There's one that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. You see that? So sometimes some people are say things and they slip with their speech, but it may not come from their heart. Okay? A lot of people make mistakes. You understand? A lot of people say things and blur things out of anger. You know, out of just being, you know, emotional or just being upset. But it doesn't mean that they actually really feel that way. Okay? Read. And who is he that have not offended with his tongue you see that we've all we, we're all uh guilty of offending at uh, one time or another with our tongue all of us are okay so no one is, is no one is exempt okay from you know from um, offending other brothers and sisters with our tongue but we have to examine that spirit and we have to examine that vibration and make sure that that's something that we don't continue to do. And we have to just be mindful of when we do uh, feel overwhelmed, you understand, by that spirit to want to talk about somebody else or whatever. You got to you got to reel it in. You got to control it. And you got to manage your tongue. All right. So let's move on. Let's get um, um, let's get Ecclesiastes, the 27th chapter.
As a matter of fact, let's 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 get um before we get that, let's get Proverbs the eleventh chapter. Proverbs eleven and thirteen. Some sidebar scriptures. Proverbs 11 and 13, and I also want to get into the law too, okay? Just to enforce uh, what we just read in Ecclesiastes about ruling our tongue and, and uh, uh, backbiting and bearing false witness. Proverbs 11 and uh, verse 13, mm -hmm. start from verse 12. Uh, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor. You see that? So when you're void of wisdom and the Holy Spirit is not dealing with you, the Most High is not dealing with you, when you've been abandoned by the Holy Spirit because of your wicked thoughts and your deceit and your sin. Read that again. He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor. You see that? This is, the, this is how you act. This is how you behave. Okay, when you're not dealing with wisdom. When the Spirit of the Most High is not in you, you don't have any respect for no one. You don't have any concern about anyone. All right, you're, you're dealing with, uh, with, uh, with a selfish um, disposition because you don't care about your neighbor. Read. Mm. But a man of understanding holdeth his peace. You see that? But a man of understanding will hold his peace. Read on. A tale bearer revealeth secrets. You see that? So a tale bearer revealeth secrets. He'll rat you out, he'll snitch, whatever. He'll, uh, you know, tell other people about your business, about what's going on inside your home, about what happened to you in your personal life. This is what people of no wisdom do. People who are not dealing with the Holy Spirit. Because once the Holy Spirit leaves you, who enters into you? Satan. Okay, so Satan don't care about other brothers and sisters. He don't care. He want, he want to cause confusion. He want to cause division and discord. That's his job. That's what he do. All right. Read on. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. You see that? But so when you're of a faithful spirit, a trustful uh, spirit, a righteous spirit, you'll conceal the matter. There's no need for you to expose this brother. There's no need for you to expose this sister. You wouldn't want anyone to expose you if you made a mistake or if you were in the spirit of error. You would want to be restored in the spirit of meekness. And that's what you have to do. That's what we have to do a lot of times. Most of the time, all the time, that's what we have to do. Now, there is some cases where you do have to uh, put someone out there, you understand, and you have to mark them in front of the congregation because they have this consistent track record of just being rebellious and disobedient. disobedient. So, yes, during those particular times, yes, you got to expose this brother. You got to let the, congreg the congregation know this brother or this sister has been doing because they will, they'll, they'll damage other brothers and sisters. So in that respect, yes, you have to put it out there. You got to reveal it. But if it's, if it's, if it's a, a situation that you can kind of monitor and manage and control without doing that, that's what I would suggest you do. Try to conceal the matter. All right? So uh, let's move on. Let's get, um, let's get Leviticus the 19th chapter. <clears throat> Leviticus 19 and 16. Let's get it in the law. Okay? Mm -hmm. So not only is, is tell bearing and uh, tattling and revealing people's secrets, not only is it a, um, a moral issue, okay, but it's a, a, a civic uh, issue also. It's a civic law. Not to do that. Leviticus 19 and 16. Read that. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 16. Read verse 15, please. First. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. So listen, we can't uh, be unrighteous in judgment. Okay, when it comes to how we uh, view and deal with different matters, we can't be unrighteous. Read. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. You see that? So whether it's a rich person or whether it's a mighty person, we can't have respect to persons. It doesn't matter who it is. So because a person is poor, 
it doesn't mean that we're not supposed to have, have uh, you know, the same amount of respect that we should have for someone that's rich. We got to deal with them both uh, uh, equally. All right? Read. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. That's right. Read. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Right. So that's not what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to go up and down as a talebearer, as someone who's bearing tells, bearing a tell here, bearing a tell there, going from house to house. Okay. We're not supposed to do that. All right. Read. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the most high. Right. And we shouldn't bear false witness against a neighbor to have him con condemned or put to death. All right. Let's go back in the Apocrypha and let's get a, a little more on ruling the tongue. Let's get uh, Ecclesiasticus, the 23rd chapter, uh, the book of Sirach, the 23rd chapter, rather. <clears throat> 23 and let's start from verse 7 actually let's start from verse 1 23 and 1 Ecclesiasticus chapter 23 and verse 1 mm -hmm. O most high father and governor of all my whole life mm -hmm. leave me not to their counsels and let me not fall by them right so uh, we have to pray to the Most High and ask the Most High to not allow us to be led by satanic counsel. Okay? And let us not fall by these spirits that we're dealing with and by the seduction that we're dealing with. Read. Verse 2. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over mine heart? Right. So, the, so who will set scourges over our thoughts and over our hearts? Who's going to set uh, restraints? Okay? Who's going to do this? We have to do this ourselves. We have to start disciplining ourselves and start being mindful of, of some of the thoughts that we have and some of the things that we get involved in. Okay? And a lot of times we don't want to see it. You understand? Or when we do see it, uh, you know, just that fast, the wicked one comes, Satan comes, and he, he pushed that thought out of your mind. Because a lot of times it's a struggle. We struggle and we're being tossed to and fro with different thoughts. Should I do this or shouldn't I do it? But you got to listen and you got to discipline yourself. Okay? And do the right thing. Okay? Read. That they spare me not for mine ignorances and it pass not by my sins. You see that? So being ignorant, you're not going to be spared. Dealing with these, with these spirits. You understand what I'm saying? They're, not, they're, they're, they're playing for keeps. These spirits are trying to take us to hell. You understand? So they're playing for keeps. So we have to be more mindful of, of uh, how we're dealing with different things in our, in, our, in our lives and in our minds, our thoughts. Okay, read. Verse 3. Lest mine ignorances increase and my sins abound to my destruction. Mm -hmm. And I fall before mine adversaries and mine enemy rejoice over me whose hope is far from thy mercy. Right. So I like to come. I like to kind of touch base on the spiritual a lot, but this is also speaking about physical enemies also. But a lot of times, when 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 you read verse one, it's talking about who's going to govern your thoughts. So at that particular point, it's something that's going on here in your mind. Okay. So that's why a lot of times when I review this scripture, I like to deal with it from a spiritual uh, perspective versus dealing with physical enemies. Okay. Read. O Lord, Father and power of my life, mm -hmm. give me not a proud look, but turn away from thy servants, always a haughty mind. Right, so the Most High, mm -hmm. we have to turn away our, our minds from being haughty. So we have to deal with self-examination. We have to turn away our minds from thinking, uh, thinking that we are more than what we are. We're servants, we're brothers and we're sisters. Okay, nothing, nothing more, nothing less. The only distinction between us is how we set up the ranking system when it comes to leadership. That's the only distinction. But when it comes to the Most High, there's no respect to persons. Okay, read. Verse 5. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence, and thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to, to serve me. You see that? So those are the only people the Most High is going to exalt. 
and hold up the people who want to deserve him, who want to uh, serve him, excuse me. But the other ones who's dealing with the vain hopes, it says. Mm -hmm. Read that again. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence, and thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee. Right, so the concupiscence and the vain uh, hopes, the perversions and things like that, the negativity, the wickedness, those, those people fall. The Most High, he don't uplift them. He don't support them. He don't hold them up. He, he don't sustain them. Read. Let not the greediness of the belly, nor lust of the flesh, take hold of me. You see that? And that's what we need to fight. Let not the greediness of the belly have an insatiable uh, lust for taste, for food, for drinking, things like that. Let, let not those things uh, consume us. And what else does it say again? Nor lust of the flesh. Right, nor the lust of the flesh take control of us and lay hold to our, um, our bodies also. All right, read. And give not over me, thy servant, into an impudent mind. Right, and don't be given over to a weak mind. All right, read. Hear, O children, the discipline of the mouth. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth it shall never be taken in his lips. You see that? So he that, that managed what comes out of, it, out of his mouth and how, and what comes out of his, and how he utilized his tongue shall never be taken with his lips. Because you can get caught with your lips. Your mouth can get you in trouble. Mm. Can get you in trouble just by running your mouth. And then you'll say, darn man, I wish I would have never said anything. It's too late for that. Mm. You should have bridled your tongue. Read. Mm. Verse 8. The sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. You see that? So you're going to be left in your foolishness. The evil speaker and the one who, who's proud mm. shall fall together. Read on. Verse 9, accustom not thy mouth to swearing, neither use thyself to the naming of the Holy One. For right. as a servant that is continually beaten shall not be without a blue mark, so he that sweareth and nameth the Most High Power continually shall not be faultless. Right, so we have, we have to make sure that we don't um, uh, use the Most High name in vain. And, th and that we don't constantly swear, especially when we're babbling and talking. That's what a lot of people do. That's, that's what the foolish do. You know, they, they, they talk so much, and in the process, they're swearing and using the Most High's name in the process while they're talking. Okay? Let's move on. Let's get uh, Ecclesiasticus, the, um, uh, the 26th chapter. Okay? 26. Yes, sir. 26 and uh, let's start from verse 4. Just want to touch base on uh, a few things for sisters. Read that. Uh, Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sirach, mm -hmm. chapter 26. Let's start from 1. And verse 1. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that have a virtuous wife, mm -hmm. for the number of his days shall be double. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. So the Most High says, blessed is a man that have a virtuous woman, right? For the number of his days shall be double. So when a brother has a virtuous woman, and you sisters, when you're virtuous, okay, your, your, uh, your virtuousness or whatever, it, um, it affects your husband. Your behavior, you understand? It affects your husband. All right, read. Verse three. Mm -hmm. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Most High. Right, so a brother that fear the Most High, nine times out of 10, the Most High will bless him and give him a virtuous wife and a good woman, read. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Most High, he shall at all times rejoice with, the, with a cheerful countenance. Mm -hmm. Read. There be three things that mine heart feareth, and for the fourth I was so afraid. Mm -hmm. The slander of a city, 
the gathering together of an unruly multitude. So the Mosai says that he hates the slandering of a city, a multitude of people coming together, read, and a false accusation. All these are worse than death. Read that again. Verse 5. There be three things that mine heart feareth, mm -hmm. and for the fourth I was so afraid. Mm -hmm. The slander of a city, right. the gathering together of an unruly multitude. Right, so the Most High says he hate the gathering together of an unruly multitude. And sometimes that, ha that happens. That has happened in the church. I wanted to comment on that. A lot of people grouping up, coming together, murmuring, talking, mm -hmm. running their mouth about different things. But the Most High says he hates that. Read. And a false accusation. And false accusations. People bringing up false accusations. The Most High says he hates that also. Read. All these are worse than death. Mm. Read. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. But that jealousy is something exceed all of these things. A grief of heart, okay, is a woman that is jealous over another woman, okay? And sometimes, you know, sisters, you know, they, they start talking. You understand? They start attacking one, each other. They start talking about each other. They start murmuring about one another. They start backbiting one another. This is what, what happens sometimes, okay? So you sisters have to watch your tongue in this respect also and make sure that you don't deal with these uh, different situations, all right? Let's move on. Let's get um, um, Ecclesiastes. Let's go on to the 28th chapter and get the 13th verse, okay, along the same lines of what we just uh, left. Because when women are dealing with uh, spirits of jealousy over other women, you know, they, they start talking. And um, a lot of times it doesn't turn out good. You know, relationships are destroyed. Uh, credibility is destroyed, sisterhood gets destroyed, all because sisters are, are murmuring and talking and backbiting against one another, and it has to stop, okay? If, you, if there's something going on with the sister, you don't have to go to another sister to talk to an, uh, another sister about what's going on with this sister, okay? Just, just confront the sister yourself and talk to her. And tell her what you're feeling. Tell her, you know, what, you, what you're dealing with. Tell her what you, what you, what you uh, disliked or, or whatever about what she did. That's the only thing that's going to help her. You tell Barry and go on to another sister and running your mouth is not going to resolve anything. Okay? You linking up with another sister, talking about another sister. You're really talking about yourself. Because we're the body, right? Aren't we the body? So when you talk about another brother or sister or do anything detrimental to another brother or sister, you're doing it to yourself. And this is why the body can't, this is why we can't assemble the body of your shire the way we need to. But there's too much division. There's too much discord. There's too much backbiting amongst us. And this is why it's difficult for us to come together in that one spirit. And this is why it's, it's, it's difficult for the Most High and for the Holy Spirit to totally rest upon us the way that they rest upon us in, in, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, in ancient times. It's hard because it's, 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 it's different forms of sin that's amongst us and nobody wants to examine themselves. Nobody wants to correct themselves. Nobody want to do what they need to do to really get themselves together. Nobody want to chip, chip and shave off the sin that's on themselves, but they, also, they always want to take a shot and chip and try to uh, shave the sin that's on someone else. That's why Yeshaya made the comment that he made about the beam being in your eye. We got to get it together. All right? So uh, Ecclesiasticus 28 and 13. Mm -hmm. uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 28 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Curse the whisperer and double tongue. You see that this is what's going to happen. The whisperer gets cursed and the double tongue get cursed. Going to this sister, saying something, then going to another sister and saying something. That's a double tongue. Read. For such have destroyed many that were at peace. You see that? And sisters had peace. They were at peace. But when you're in this vibration and in this spirit, you destroy many. 
You destroy relationships. You destroy marriages. You destroy homes. You destroy churches with this kind of behavior. Sisters and brothers, we have to examine this, okay? We have to stop murmuring and backbiting. Read. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. A backbiting tongue have disquieted many. You see that? A backbiting tongue have disquieted many. It was, man, we had peace at one time. It was peaceful till she started. It was peaceful till that brother got started. Till he started saying this and saying that, he wasn't having any problems. Read. A backbiting tongue have disquieted many mm -hmm. and driven them from nation to nation. You see that? And then you drive people out the door. Drive them out the door. Man, I, I, I don't want to attend the church anymore. Mm. Because, you know, the sisters, I don't know, they just don't be in the right spirit. You know, they be talking about one another and backbiting each other. Who wants to be around that? Especially when new members come in. Who wants to be around that kind of atmosphere? Who wants to be in that kind of environment where, this, where, where there's this friction at? And it all starts with running the mouth, with the tongue. That's why we have to watch it. Read. Strong cities have it pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. You see that? Strong cities have the mouth and the tongue destroyed and overthrew great men. Men, marriages destroyed. All because the slander of the tongue, relationships over. All because the slander of a tongue, lies, things that wasn't even real were said. Read. A backbiting tongue have cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labors. And this is what you sisters have to see. You can get deprived of your labors by having a backbiting tongue and then also a sister who was grounded and settled and who and who just had herself together you understand a backbiting tongue had destroyed her and she lost everything it, it, it goes both ways okay read that again verse 15 a backbiting tongue have cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labors you see that so having a backbiting tongue have cast out virtuous women women and have deprived them of their labors. Everybody end up losing, everybody. But the person who was doing the backbiting, they're the ones that got the benefit. But what benefit did, did you really get by attacking this sister or exposing this sister? What benefit did you really gain? You know what your benefit was? It was, it was that self-adulation, that self-gratification -grat in knowing that you destroyed someone. That's what you take pleasure in, knowing that you that you want to deliberately destroy a relationship, that you're going to deliberately destroy a marriage, that you're going to uh, deliberately uh, bring up a false accusation to get this against this sister so she can lose her position in the church so you can get it. This is what we deal with. This is what the mouth does. This is what the tongue does. These are the dangers of, of the mouth, of running your mouth. These are the dangers. It, it, it destroys. There's more on that? Mm -hmm. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Whoso hearkeneth unto it shall never find rest mm -hmm. and never dwell quietly. You see that? The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, mm -hmm. but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You see that? Listen, give me 40 lashes. I'll take the whip, okay, before I let somebody just lie on me. Listen, I, I'll, I'll, don't lie on me. I, don't say that. Don't put that out there. It'll destroy me. Just give me the 40 lashes, mm. and I'm good. That's interesting, isn't it? Mm. That's, how, that's how much damage uh, the tongue can do. Right. You'd rather take 40. Man, give me time in prison. I, don't, but please, don't start talking. That's, that's sad really sad. Read on. Verse 18. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. You see that? A lot of people have fallen and died in wars by the edge of the sword, but more people have died by the tongue because of what was said. Okay? More people have died. 
and we y'all see that every day. Mm. All, not every day, but almost every day. A lot of people dying in our neighborhoods and in our communities because of what somebody said. Well, he said it. Well, she said it. That's what they said. I heard him say it. And then you got Jake. He going to go home and get the gun. He come back and say, yo, what you say? All because of tail-bearing, murmuring, backbiting, lying, slandering, all over the tongue, all over the mouth. This is what happened. Millions of people have died. Okay? And there's a lot of people in prison over the mouth. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. Is more on that? Uh, that's, that's it? That's, yeah, let's get on. Okay, let's move on. Let's get, uh, let's go back to the uh, Book of Wisdom of Solomon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And, um... Let's start from one and six. I think we stopped at five earlier. Let's start from verse six. All right. We're almost done, brothers and sisters. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter one and verse six. Mm -hmm. For wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. Mm -hmm. For the Most High is witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart right. and a hearer of his tongue. You see that? Read that again from the top. I'm sorry, six. For wisdom is a loving spirit mm -hmm. and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. So wisdom is a loving spirit and she will not um, acquit. She will not acquit. Excuse me. Yeah. She will not acquit a blasphemer of her words. For the Most High's witness of his reigns, of her reigns, excuse me, and a true beholder of her heart and hearer of his tongue. It's like, I think I'm reading that incorrectly, excuse me. It is. I apologize. Read that again. For wisdom is a loving spirit <clears throat> mm -hmm. and will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. Right. For the Most High is witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart, mm -hmm. and, and a hearer of his tongue. Right, so I apologize. Excuse me. So the Most High hears everything that we say. Okay, and the Most High is not going to, uh, um, you know, you're not going to get off. He's not going to acquit you, okay, for the things that you have said. Mm -hmm. Okay, every, um, every word that you say, there's going to be an accountability for everything that we utter out of our mouths. Okay, read on. Verse 7. Mm-hmm. For the spirit of the Most High filleth the world, mm -hmm. and that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. Right, which is the spirit, read. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. Right, so people who speak unrighteous things, they can't be hid. Okay, you can't hide. You, you can utter what you want behind closed doors, but there's an account. Okay, there's a record, rather. Okay, of all the things that you said. All right, read. Neither shall vengeance, when it punisheth, pass by him. Mm -hmm. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. Right, you know who that is. That, those are the angels. Okay, read that again. Uh, from verse 8. Mm -hmm. Therefore he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. Mm -hmm. Neither shall vengeance, when it punisheth, pass by him. See, so the vengeance is not going to pass by you. It's not going to pass over you. It's not going to go around you. It's going to come straight to you. Read. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, mm -hmm. and the sound of his words shall come unto the Most High for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. You see that? So everything you said is going to go on instant replay. Okay? And it's going to come before the Most High for the manifestation of of all the wicked things you've said and done. Read. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things. Right. So the most high ear, he hears everything. That's the ear of jealousy. He hears everything and he sees everything. Everything is documented. You think when you go to court and uh, what's the guy, the district attorney, the DA, you think the DA have, have, have a record and an account of all the crimes you committed? They don't have anything compared to what the most high have. The most high have a he probably have a scroll 
or records on us. Read. And the noise of murmurings is not hid. You see that also the noise of murmurings, they're not hid. So when you murmur, the most I hears that noise. He hears that utterance. It's all recorded. So that's something that we need to be mindful of. We got to make sure that we're not um, backbiting one another. Make sure that we kind of monitor and manage our tongue. Okay. Read. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, mm -hmm. and refrain your tongue from backbiting. You see that? So the Most High says, beware of murmuring because it's unprofitable. There's no benefit in it. But, but the only benefit that you get, that people get a lot of times when they murmur, is just that it's, it's, it's the benefit of knowing that you've destroyed someone. The benefit of knowing that you, that you, uh, that, you know, that you, um, you know, that you assassinated, someone, uh, assassinated someone's character. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You, you feel good about knowing that people look at them differently now because you said something, because you put something out on them. That's the pleasure that we derive, and we have to think about that. I mean, you really have to think about that. Like, who would be in such a, a, a vile, wicked spirit? Who would take pleasure in something like that, in destroying someone else, in exposing someone else? Who would do that? Who would feel a sense of, of joy? Mm. You got the real example. That's, that's a, a, a vile, wicked vibration to mm. feel good about that. Like, a, you know, it's a sigh of relief now. They're exposed. Well, I put it out there. Everybody know now that she, that she not what, 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 what they really think she is. And, and, or, or, or we're brothers. Or he not what they really think he is. He, he's exposed now. Sad. It's really sad that we're like that. Let's move on. Is there more on that? Uh, just to finish uh, okay. the verse. <coughs> uh, Therefore, beware of murmuring, which mm -hmm. is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. Mm -hmm. For there is no word so secret mm -hmm. that shall go for naught. Mm -hmm. You and see the, that? Sorry, excuse me. And the mouth that, belie that belieth slayeth the soul. So there is no word that's going to go for naught. You understand? So we have to uh, refrain. Okay, we have to uh, restrain yourself. You, you understand? I'm not telling you to, to, to put your hand over your mouth, but because it starts in your mind first. So you got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be mindful and cautious that when you, when you come up against these different situations that you just want to, um, I don't know, you want to think about it before you actually just go out there and just try to just um, attack anyone. Okay, you just want to be mindful you know about about the about your uh your approach when you're dealing with people and thinking about people and what you have to say about people okay let's get uh matthews the uh 12th chapter okay matthews 12. yeah uh hang in there brothers and sister, sisters sisters we're, we're almost uh we're almost done matthews yeah 12th chapter more on uh, some of the sidebar scriptures. Um, Matthews 12 and uh, let's start from verse 34. Uh, the book of St. Matthew chapter 12 and mm -hmm. verse 34. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Mm. So Yeshua is talking to the Pharisees and he's saying, listen, how can y'all be uh, evil and then speak good things? Okay, because evil, evil people don't speak good things. Good things can't come out of evil people. Read. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, Speak good things. Mm -hmm. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right. So out of their minds, the abundance of their heart, the things that they were imagining and thinking, okay, and the adversity they had with Yeshaya, okay, that's, those were the things that was coming out of their mouth. They was always in adversity. Nothing good came out of their mouth 
when it came to how they was dealing with Yeshaya. Nothing. Everything was an attack. It was to try to ridicule him, to um, expose him, to, ex to cross-examine him. That's all they was doing. No nothing productive came out of their mouths. Nothing pertaining to righteousness, nothing pertaining to salvation, nothing. Okay, and this is how we behave sometimes. Nothing good come out, come, comes out of our mouth. There's a cliche uh, that if, uh, if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. Hmm. Okay, read. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You see that? So the treasure is in your mind. It's in your thoughts, in your imaginations, and what you think about people. Those are the things you bring forth. Okay? A lot of times. And people can notice it. People can see it. People pick up on things. Even when you try to pretend mm. that you're not feeling something towards a brother or a sister, they still pick up on it. People, because a lot of times it's, 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 it's the aura that's, that, that's on our faces. A lot of times. Then some things are vibrational too that we can just feel between one another. Okay, read. <clears throat> Verse 36. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You see that? So in the day of judgment, every idle word that you spoke, everything that you uttered, okay, whether it was good or bad, okay, you're going to have to give an account for it. So, it, you know, repent, you understand, and, uh, and just make sure that you don't, that you just try to monitor and examine the things you say, uh, you know, that comes out of your mouth from now on. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Let's get uh, James, the third chapter. All right. This class got me thinking about all the negative things I ever said. Yes, let's get James the third chapter. Give me a minute to get it. Excuse me. Hmm. Okay. Hold up, sorry. Verse 31. Yes. Let's start from um yes, James 31. Uh, the book of James, chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Mm -hmm. For in many things... Interesting. Can I, can I respond to that? This is for you younger brothers and sisters. Be not many masters, because you're going to receive the greater condemnation. That's why you should wait on your ministry. Mm -hmm. Don't be too quick to, 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 to try to catapult up there to the top and be an elder. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's going to be a greater condemnation upon, upon you if you don't have yourself together. If you're not prepared and ready for that position. You got to have time and tenure and experience. You just, you just can't be an elder coming out the gate thinking you know everything. Because you have, you're responsible for souls that's underneath you. That's been, uh, that's been, um, that's been given to you by the Holy Spirit, like Acts the 20th chapter talks about. Okay, read. My brethren, mm -hmm. be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Mm -hmm. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Right, so a brother that doesn't offend in word, He's a perfect man. He's a righteous brother. He's in, 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 in a good state. Read. And also able, sorry, and able also to bridle the whole body. You see that? And by him able to bridle his, his uh, uh, tongue and not uttering different words, he's able to bridle and control his, his whole body because your, your tongue will cause your flesh and your body to sin. Okay? Your tongue will get you put to death and it's just your mouth. And everything else is gone. No, no, no other part of your body did anything. It's just your mouth that got you in trouble. Read. Verse 3. 
Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, mm -hmm. and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, mm -hmm. whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You see that? So you take, you have a little, um, um, what is it, a stir? What do you call those things on the ship? Um, like, like this. Like the this. steering wheel, whatever it is. I forget what you call it, but that little uh, device, it moves such a big, gigantic uh, ship, piece of machinery. You understand? And then little bits of, uh, um, what is it called here? A bridle for the horse. For the horse. Bits. Right. Little bits, okay, control a horse. A horse sometimes is stubborn and have all this power and strength. But yet we can't control our mouths. And it's, it's, so, it's, it's like the smallest thing on our body. But it overcomes the whole body. And we can't even manage it and control it. Mm. Read verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. You see that? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Meaning your tongue can, can get you involved in like a variety of different things. It's a world, it says, right? A world of iniquity? Mm -hmm. A world of iniquity. A world of iniquity, meaning your, your tongue can get you involved in so many different sins, so many different situations. Your tongue, your mouth can get you involved in. Read. Verse 6. <clears throat> and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Mm -hmm. So is the tongue among our members, mm. that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Mm, mm, mm. For, mm. Sorry, go ahead. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. That's what the mouth will do for you when you run it. That's what it'll do for you. You can't control it, and it's full of evil. And what else it says? It and is a deadly poison. Mm -hmm. Deadly poison. Meaning you can, you can corrupt, you can destroy with it. You can do so much with the mouth. Mm -hmm. So much. And this is why it's real important that we, just, we manage our tongue and manage our mouth. We have to be more, uh, more aware. Okay, of what we're saying and what we're thinking and what we utter out of our, our mouths. When we're uh, dealing with, when we're emotional, when we're dealing with anger, hostility, when we're upset, whatever the case may be, we really have to just slow down some and just be careful about what we utter and what we say. Is there more on that? Um, just to finish up verse 9. Okay. Therewith bless we the Most High, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of the Most High. You see that now? We use the same mouth and we bless the Most High, we praise the Most High when we pray. Okay, read. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing, my brethren. You these... see that? But out of the same mouth come blessings and curses. So how do you pray to the Most High? Mm -hmm. Then come out of prayer and then go slander and curse out a brother or sister. Mm. How do you do that? How does that, how does that work? Mm. You praying to the Most High, you're telling the Most High, uh, forgive us our debts, we forgive our debtors, but then you go, you go right out of prayer and then you, you know, you insult somebody or you, you know, you interrogate somebody for, for, for some money that they owe you. How do we do that? Read. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place? You see that? He said these things are, are, are that ought not to be. They're not supposed to be. Like it doesn't even make any sense. James, he's like he's puzzled. He doesn't understand how this is happening. This is what he's saying. 
he, he's trying to figure it out, but he can't comprehend it. It doesn't make sense to him. Mm. Read. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? I don't know. Does it? When you open up your faucet and you're trying to get water, do bitter water come out and sweet water come out? Or just, you know, regular water come out? Excuse me, it won't be sweet, but you understand what I'm saying? Read. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You see that? So your mouth can't yield negative and then yield positive. It can't yield righteousness and, um, and yield wickedness. Mm. It's not supposed to do that. You got you to gotta get it under control. Read. Verse 13. <laughs> Who is a wise man mm -hmm. and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Mm -hmm. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. You see that? And that's what we have. So that's interesting too, because so that's what we're really doing. We're lying against the truth. Mm. We're lying against the truth. And that's a form of blasphemy. So we really have to examine that. Read that again. Um, 13. 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? So who's using wisdom and endowed with wisdom among us? Who? Any, any of us here. Read. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. So how do we display our works towards the Most High? How do we display our works towards brothers and sisters? How do we do that? Read. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. You see that? And that's what we have. So we don't, we don't display with, with, with meekness of wisdom. We do it with envy and strife. That's how we do it. That's how I show my love. That's how, is that how we do it? With envy and strife? Instead of dealing, dealing with situations with meekness and kindness and mercy? Read. This wisdom descendeth not from above. You see that the Most High says, that doesn't descend from above. Being despiteful, being malicious, having evil, wicked intent. That doesn't come from the heavens. It doesn't come from the most high. Those attributes are not of the Holy Spirit. Read. But is earthly, sensual, devilish. You see that? So it's earthly, carnal. Okay? It's physical, sensual, and it says it's devilish, right? Mm -hmm. Demonic. Satanic. That's what we do. So now we're practicing witchcraft. Read on. For where envying and strife is, mm -hmm. there is confusion and every evil work. You see that? So where envy and strife is, and that's what we do a lot of times with our mouth. Envying one another. Striving against one another. We do it verbally. By backbiting and talking about and murmuring about one another. Tell bearing. That's how we do it. Read verse 17. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You see that? We don't display those principles most, most of the time. We don't display those, those qualities. And we have to start examining ourselves make sure that those are the characteristics that we that we put on and that we display when it comes to how we uh, interact with one another and how we deal with each other mm. all right Ms. Moana? Uh, just to finish verse 18 okay. and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace so the fruits of righteousness was what uh james just, just mentioned okay and they're sown in people who make peace okay so if you don't want to make peace, you're not going to, you're not going to exemplify those particular attributes. Okay, and, and when we attack one another with, our, with the tongue, with the mouth, okay, these are the things that we, uh, the, those, the, neg the negative energies are the things that we, we uh, you know, we display, okay, to people. All right?
So we got a few more scriptures and it's almost over. Let's get, let's go back to the Apocrypha and get um, Ecclesiasticus, the book of Sirach, the 28th chapter. 28 and uh, let's start from verse 9. No, as a matter of fact, we can bypass that. Let's go back in the Bible. Let's get Ephesians. I apologize, y'all. Excuse me. You go, the rest of these series of scriptures keeps us in the Bible, so let's just uh, do that. Okay. Um, Ephesians uh, 5 and 29. 4 and 29, excuse me. 4 and 29? Mm hmm. Mm. Okay, read. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Okay, so we shouldn't let any corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth. Nothing negative, okay, um, you know, should, should come out of our mouth. Should be, it shouldn't be a part of our conversation. All right, read. But that which is good to the use of edifying. But if something do come out of your mouth, it should be that which should be good for the edifying of the church. Okay, not to destroy brothers and sisters, to uplift and exalt brothers and sisters. Okay, and exalt brothers and sisters. Those are the things that should come out of our mouth. But a lot of times the opposite comes out. Read. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. Mm -hmm. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of the Most High. Right. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You see that? So that's what you do. You actually grieve the Holy Spirit. That's what was dropped in Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. You grieve her. When, when corrupt communication comes out of your mouth and it's in your mind, okay, you're not edifying brothers and sisters. You're not edifying in a doctrine. You grieve the Holy Spirit. She's upset. And she wants to flee and she wants to leave you. Okay? Let's get um, First Peter's, the uh, fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. Get a, a, a couple, a few principles on, uh, you know, what we should live by, and try to, um, uh, you know, incorporate in, in our in our lives when it comes to dealing with uh, with the tongue and our mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, sorry. First Peter's four and one. Uh, first Peter chapter four and verse one. For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. You see that? So as much as Yeshua have suffered for us in his flesh, we have to arm ourselves likewise with the same mindset that he has. So what does that mean? that we have to suffer in our flesh the same way that he suffered in, in his flesh. So you gotta subdue yourself, fight your flesh, fight those thoughts, okay? Fight those evil inclinations. You gotta arm yourself with that same kind of mindset that Yeshia did, because he dealt with the same kind of common sin that we dealt with. But when he dealt with it, when he dealt with it and came across those particular um, encounters, he, he, he fought against it. And that's what we need to do. Okay, mm -hmm. read. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. You see that? So when you suffer in your flesh, you cease from sin. You don't sin. You don't commit sin. You refrain. You abstain, okay, from sin, from sinful behavior, from sinful thoughts. Okay, read. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of the Most High. You see that? But that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're living the rest of our life still in the lust of this flesh, in the lust of men, the lust of this world. But we got baptized. That's what Yeshua uh, died for. That's what he was crucified for. For us to be able to live our life, uh, the, the rest of our, our, our life in, um, in newness of life. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Read that again. Uh, verse 2, mm -hmm. that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, 
but to the will of the Most High. So we're, sh we're not supposed to be living the rest of our life, right? The life that we're living on at the baptism, we're not supposed to be living it to the lust of men, to the lust of ourselves, mm. okay? We should be living our lives to the will and submitting to the will of the Most High. Mm. This is what we should be doing. Read. Uh, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. You see that? So in, in, in our past life, we was living according and going according to the course of this world. But now we're supposed to be living and going according to the course of Yeshia. Read. I just jump down to 11. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, 1 Peter 4 and 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the Most High. Mm -hmm. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which the Most High giveth. Right, so if you're speaking, speak according to the oracles of the Most High and do it according to the ability that the Most High gives you. According to the, the blessing and the wisdom that he has bestowed upon you. Okay, don't try to be like somebody else. Be yourself. Okay, teach what you need to uh, teach. You understand? Convey to the people what you need to convey to the people. All right? In your own spirit. All right? Let's move on. Let's get, um, uh, get First Peter's, let's go to First Peter's 1 and 16. Okay. Mm. Okay, so we're not supposed to live our life according to the, uh, to, uh, society, according to the, the uh, of uh, the course of this world, okay, according to the lust of men, according to our own uh, lust. Read First uh, Peter's one and sixteen. Mm -hmm. This is how we should be living. Read because, or how we should be. Excuse me. Because it is written, mm -hmm. "Be ye holy, for I am holy." Right. It is written, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." Okay. So Yeshaya, he was holy. He refrained from different things, from lust, from temptation from backbiting and, and murdering. He, he had the same, he encountered the same sins that we encounter, and he was able to abstain from those sins and fight those sins. He was able to fight those thoughts, okay? And counteract those temptations. This is what we have to do, okay? And we don't have an option. We, this has to get done, okay? If, if, if you're gonna be a lamb without blemish, as your child was, then you have to be, you have to really be sin free. Okay, as difficult as that may sound to you, that's what you really have to be. Okay, so that's how, that's how important it is for us to strive for perfection. All right? Let's get uh, Colossians, the third chapter. Okay, more on the principles of communication and the mouth and managing and controlling our tongue. Let's start from uh, verse 1. 3 and 1? Yes. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. This is interesting too because it says, if you then been risen with Christ, with Yeshua. Okay, a lot of us, we need to figure that out again. Have, have you, have we been risen with him? Because... It's a possibility that some of us have. A lot of us need to go back to where we got baptized at and, and go get Yeshaya. We, because we, we left him back there. He, he probably still in the water. Okay? No disrespect not to be uh, facetious or, 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 or funny about it. Okay? But when we come up, we're supposed to come up with him. Or come up as him. Not come up as ourselves. We're supposed to be back there in the water. And Yeshaya is supposed to be with us now. But a lot of times at their baptism, that doesn't seem to happen. And we have to ask ourselves why. Okay, read. If you then be risen with Christ, mm -hmm. seek those things which are above. You see that? So we should be seeking things that are above, not earthly things, not carnal things, not uh, lustful things, not materialistic things. We're supposed to be seeking spiritual things. 
how we can better ourselves and how we can grow in elevating the spirit, how we can assist our brothers and sisters to grow in elevating the spirit, how we can gather ourselves together, okay, how we can worship our power, worship the Most High, worship uh, his son Yeshaya. These are the things that our mind is supposed to be on, but yet we, we, uh, we revert back to the old man after baptism. How is that? Okay, read on. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Most High. Right. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Right, so our affection, our desire, okay, our, um, our yearning, okay, it should be for things above. It should, it should be for heavenly things. It should be, our, our, our mind should be totally immersed in, in us figuring out how we need to get ourselves together so we can live that life of perfection for the Most High and Yeshaya. That's what it's about. It's, it's, it's about nothing else but that. At this stage, read. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ you in the Most that? High. So we're supposed to be dead. That old man is supposed to be dead. And your life, the life that you was living before baptism, it's not supposed to exist anymore after baptism. But a lot of times we find ourselves still living that old life, still thinking about that old life, still pursuing that old life. And it's wrong. We have to examine that about ourselves. Read. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. You see that? That's, that's our life right now. Our life is not, your life is not your life. Your body is not of your own. Your time is not of your own. Your very existence right now today, it's not of your own. It's of Yeshaya. That's the life that you're supposed to be living. His life. Okay, the life that you find in these Gospels. The life that you find in the Old Testament. In, in all the precepts. And all the records and information that we have about our forefathers. About our culture. Our nationality. Our, our tradition. Our customs. That's the life that we're supposed to be living right now. But we still living like Americans. Or wh wh whatever country you you're in. That's how we're still living. We're still in that mindset. Read. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You see that? So that's when people are supposed to see you again. That's when you get recognized again. Whatever your slave name was or whatever, that's... You understand? That's who get recognized again. Not, but right now, we're still, for some, for some apparent reason, we still have a desire and a longing to hold on to our past life. But we're supposed to be dead. Okay, so that's something that we have to examine. All right, read on. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. So now we have to mortify our members which are upon the earth, which is our body. We have to mortify it. We have to crucify it. Okay? We have to, to uh, subdue it. All right, read. Which are upon the earth, mm -hmm. fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil con concupiscence, mm -hmm. and covetousness, which is idolatry. Mm -hmm. For which things sake the wrath of the Most High cometh on, on the children of disobedience. You see that? So all these particulars, all these different characteristics is, is a... Uh, um, is a representation of children who are disobedient towards the Most High. So he's going to bring his wrath upon individuals like this, upon people like this. So we can't be these things. We can't possess these characteristics and, and these uh, traits. Mm. All right. Is there more on that or that's it? I think that's it on that, right? Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's get, let's get Psalms, the, um, um, let's get Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And then we can sign some notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Three more scriptures, Mark. Ephesians uh, 5, and let's start from verse 3. <clears throat> okay, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3. Right. But fornication and all uncleanness 
or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints. You see that? So these particular things are not supposed to be named amongst us, as becometh saints. But a lot of us still possess these kind of traits. A lot of us are still fighting these, uh, these, these different vices and different sins. And you, we got to get over it. We got to get past the stage. Okay, a lot of us are, we're on a treadmill right now. Hmm. We're, like, we're, we're like a hamster. Okay, we, we, we got to get past this stage of dealing with reoccurring sins. We got to get past it. All right? Some more on that? Uh-huh. Read. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, mm -hmm. nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Mm -hmm. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have, an, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Yeshua and of the Most High. Right, so there's no inheritance. As long as we're, we're possessing these particular attributes, we can't even anticipate the kingdom of the Most High. Okay, read on. Uh, verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of the Most High upon the children of disobedience. There it is. Okay, so rolling in this manner, all, all you're going to achieve is the wrath of the Most High coming upon you because you're, you're a child in error. Okay, you're a child of, of uh, rebellion and disobedience. All right, let's get Psalms, the 37th chapter. Psalms 37, let's start from verse 27. Thirty-seven and twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. well, the book of Psalms, chapter thirty-seven and verse twenty-seven. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell for evermore. Right. So the Most High says, "Depart from evil, right, mm -hmm. and do good and dwell for evermore." This is your, this is your, your stability right here. This is what's going to uh, sustain us departing from evil. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's more on that. Continue. Oh, that's it? Yeah, go to 30. So, so 30. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. For the most high love of judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. Mm -hmm. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. You see that? But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. So those who do wickedness, those who are not keeping the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, the most high ultimately cut them off. Okay? And their heritage and their generation. All right, think that's it. Uh, verse 29. Okay. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. Mm -hmm. Verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. You see that? So the mouth of the righteous deal with nothing but wisdom and speaks about nothing but wisdom. They don't tell where, they don't backbite, they don't murmur. The only thing that's coming out of their mouth is knowledge. All right, read. Uh, so 31. Mm -hmm. The law of his power is in his heart. Okay, let's sit on that. We went to 30. Okay, let, let's get um, Psalms, the 34th chapter. Mm -hmm. Psalms 34, and start from verse 12. Uh, Psalms chapter 34 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Mm hmm. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. You see that? So keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from speaking God. Okay? And you will, turn, you, you will obtain life with the Most High. Okay? Is more on that? Uh, verse 14. Depart from evil and do good. Right. Read. Seek peace and pursue it. Right. The only way you're going to seek peace is if you just hold your peace. Okay, and keep the peace. Read. 
Verse 15, mm -hmm. the eyes of the Most High are upon the righteous and his ears are upon, are open unto their cry. Okay. The face of the Most High is against them that do evil, mm. to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. You see that? So you get cut off. The, won't nobody remember you? Your family? No one. You won't have heir, okay, to your family line. The Most High cuts, cuts off your whole generation. That's what happened with, with, uh, with Judas. All right? There's more on that? I think that's it. Okay. One last scripture. Get Proverbs 18 and 6. Mm -hmm. Let me get it real quick. Okay, read that. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. You see that? So a fool's lips, a fool's mouth enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. Mm -hmm. So when a fool says something, you understand sometimes it, it causes contention, and he can uh, instigate a situation. And it can turn serious, and then it call for strokes. You understand? You know, you might get to tussling with a brother or a sister. All right? So we have to be careful with that. We have to, you know, just watch our tongue, watch our mouth, because our mouth, it, 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 it just causes so many problems and destroys so many things. Okay? So with that, um, that's the lesson, the Sabbath lesson for today, about watching the tongue and... Uh, watching your mouth. Uh, I apologize for for, um, for going overtime. Uh, typically, I try to go about an hour and a half, and I kind of went overtime uh, this evening, so I apologize. I hope that all you brothers and sisters uh, were, were able to get something from the class. Um, I apologize for my mishaps or, or where I was uh, inconsistent at with, with, with scripture or whatever. I apologize for that. Um, and um, we have announcements, right? Uh, I know that Elder uh, uh, Lawyer and Elder Recall will be uh, in North Carolina. Uh, they, they may be there now, as a matter of fact, as we speak. They may be probably just arriving, okay? Um, that's why they wasn't able to uh, do Sabbath uh, class uh, today. So um, myself and um, Elder uh, uh, Shapat uh, stood in for them. So. Um, uh, typically, normally, uh, Elder Recall and Elder Lawyer uh, open up the class for questions, but today I'm not going to uh, do that because they're going to be coming on this afternoon um, in North Carolina, so just stay tuned. Um, I guess, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, what, what time would it be there right about now? Um, I'm not... Uh, right now, it's, sure. it's, um, it's 627. I'm thinking... Um, I'm not exactly sure what time they're going to come on air, but just uh, stay tuned. Uh, what would they have to do, Mark? Just keep that. that uh, yeah, keep keep uh, keep you stream. Keep this channel, um, this you know, this web page open, and when it's live, you know, it'll it'll play. Just be mindful that they're coming on this afternoon. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So I guess that would be it, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, once again, uh, um, Shabbat Shalom uh, to, to you brothers and sisters who, uh, who, uh, who, who came into the class uh, late. Uh, you know, um, we thank you for taking time uh, out of your day to come and, uh, and worship with us as we worship the Most High in Yeshaya. And um, so continue to have a, uh, a blessed Sabbath and enjoy the rest of your afternoon or those of you who are in other areas, enjoy um, the rest of your evening, I guess I should say. So, um, okay, we have a, a few people uh, responding. Um, okay, okay, they're responding about the class, okay. Yeah, uh, uh I'm glad y'all enjoyed the class. Um, Elder Yurak, um, you know, uh, he, he always put together real good studies, okay, so, um, you know, thank him also as well. Okay, so um, that's it, right? That's it, yeah. Okay. All right, brothers and sisters, uh, shalom. And uh, don't forget, uh, tune in. And um, just stay tuned for Elder, uh, lawyer, Elder Ricard, Elder Lawyer, who will be broadcasting live.